1914, the First World War had broken out in Europe. The war gave the Ottoman Empire's young Turk government an opportunity to carry out mass killings of Armenians. More than 1.5 million Armenians became victims of the genocide. Hundreds of thousands of Armenian children became orphans. The lives of many of them were saved in American orphanages. The world's largest orphanage was established in Alexandropol, where more than 31,000 Armenian children found shelter. US Ambassador to Turkey, Henry Morgenthau, reported to the Department of State about the danger of the extermination of Armenians. On the 3rd of September, 1915, Morgenthau asked the Secretary of State to set up a committee to organize donations for Armenian refugees. Responding to the ambassador's appeal, different American organizations and business circles founded the American Committee for Relief in the Near East. In 1916, US President Woodrow Wilson urged Americans to remember the starving Armenians and make donations. You won't let me starve, will you? I'm Shushan from Armenia. My home has been destroyed. My father was taken away. Mother starved because she gave me all the food. I'm so hungry and cold. Thousands of other children are hungry and cold too. 17 cents a day, $5 a month, or $60 a year will save a life. City of Orphans. Here you see the photograph of a very beautiful girl. This child is Azatuhi from Marash. It's apparent from this photograph that the child grew up in a very good family. It's very different from other photographs. And the fate of this child developed very interestingly. In my opinion, it developed through God's providence. According to eyewitness accounts, so many children were dying that every morning a horse-drawn cart came and the bodies of dead children were loaded onto it 
and then carried to cemeteries to be buried there. So dozens of children died every day. Missionary doctors Charles and Ruby Ganaway one day spotted some movement by a child among the dead who were supposed to be transported to the cemetery. But that child looked like a skeleton. The doctor said he would try to cure the child. Perhaps she would live. She had a very tiny body, a bag of bones. Can you imagine what a miracle that was? The doctor cured the child and said that since he had saved the child, he must adopt her. And that's how little Azatuhi, a girl from Marash, appeared in the United States. It's an indescribable and shocking story that so many orphans can emerge immediately, that a child being raised in a very good traditional Armenian family can wake up one day to the reality of being an orphan. And this was of a mass nature all over Western Armenia. The children who narrowly escaped the genocide and found themselves in Gyumri had become orphans within a matter of days. If the children still had mothers, they were holding their mother's or grandmother's hand. They were barefoot as they traveled for days to reach Gyumri. 21,000 orphans were registered in Gyumri. That was a huge number, an indescribable situation, when children were coming to the poor city of Gyumri that was itself coping with cold and darkness, famine and disease. And imagine that these children were assembled in that city, which became a city of orphans. At the time, committees were being set up. The American Committee for Relief in the Near East was set up, and they also contributed. The shortened name of the institution became the Amarkam Orphanages because there were many American missionaries and volunteers. The International Committee for the Red Cross and the U.S. government, of course, made a great contribution to the organization of orphanages, not only by raising funds, but also through relief committees. It was these committees that engaged volunteers and sought funding, as huge means were needed to treat, feed, and educate the children. The role of the U.S. government here was great. It was through the donations of the American people that $2 million were raised in a single fundraising campaign. It was a huge amount of money for that time. There were a lot of volunteers, a lot of dedicated people, who understood that these children must be saved and that Armenia itself was a poor country and could not do anything alone. There was one smart boy at the orphanage called Vahan. He was little, but he knew his name. There was no one with him. He was alone. His neighbors must have found him and brought him along with them. Everyone was asking Vahan to give his first name and last name, but he didn't know what a last name was. Everyone was saying that Vahan had no family name, in Armenian, Terchuni. 
When they had to refer to him, they called him Vahan who has no family name, Vahan Terjunyan. When he was nine, Vahan Tarchunyan was adopted by an American missionary who took him to the United States and raised him in his family as his son. Vahan grew up and lived as a U.S. citizen. And after his death, they opened his will and found out that Vahan Tarchunyan had left some money for a cause. There was an interesting sentence in the will. Please find the building where I was saved from typhoid, where they brought me back to life and where I was saved from death, where they kept me and took care of me. Please find that building that gave shelter to children who badly needed it so that no child becomes homeless. Archbishop Ashian brought that will to Armenia in order to implement it. He found the building. A foundation was set up, the Gyumri Disabled Children's Fund, which was to be engaged in the renovation of the building. And most importantly, Vahan Tarjunian's will was carried out. Radiating from the orphanage, I promised to be a good and responsible citizen and never ask for anyone's care. Certificates like these were issued to children who left the orphanage, and through them they also managed to find jobs, as they had learned different crafts there. Hovhannes Shiraz was five years old when the Turks killed his father. His mother had no job and couldn't feed her children, so in order to save them from hunger, she had to give her three children, two daughters and one son, to the orphanage. In 1920, the Americans here opened an Amarkam orphanage that made up a third of the city. And Shiraz was in that orphanage from age five to seven. When he remembered his childhood, he would say, at my mother's we went to bed hungry and the world seemed like hell to us. We ate beans sent by the Americans and it seemed like the world was a paradise and going to bed with a full stomach was a good thing. But when we looked through the window bars at the colorful fruit that people were carrying, we wondered what they tasted like. In order to taste the colorful fruit, they had to escape from the orphanage. They escaped and went to the market where they stole something and later enjoyed what they had stolen by the banks of the Ahurian River. He would say that there were so many children at the orphanage that there were no beds for all of them to sleep in at night and they had to sleep on the floor. There wasn't enough room for them to lie on their backs, so they had to sleep on their sides. And if somebody at night got up and left, when he returned he wouldn't find his space anymore and he would have to lie at the end of the row. And being at the end of the row meant getting cold because there was no one by his side to keep him warm and there were no blankets either. Later, he wrote, we were in trouble without knowing what trouble was. When they returned to the orphanage, they were beaten and punished for breaking the rules, and they frequently escaped from the orphanage. 
Shiraz was seven during one of these escapes when they returned to the orphanage later than usual, and they punished him severely. The following morning he escaped and never returned to the orphanage. He stayed in the streets. He remembered the poplar tree that grew near their hut. He slept under any poplar tree he found in the street, thinking that his mother would pass by, find him, and take him home. Days went by, and he couldn't find his mother. He slept under a church wall, hoping that his mother would find him and take him home when she came to church to light a candle. At the age of eight and a half, he found his mother while stealing at the market. He put it in his autobiographical poem. Bitter memories of my childhood. I'm just an orphan boy amidst you. Once in the dead of night, I escaped from the orphanage. Longing for my mother, I went looking for her all around the town. And I found only our poplar tree and the ruins of our hut. She cuddled me frenziedly and touched my soul. And all the food in the market seemed to have been shared with me. But oblivious to the food, she kept holding me to her chest. She was my lost mother, who took her lost son home. Like a naughty boy, Shiraz would tell us the story. I didn't think that lady was my mother. I just thought she was a nice lady, who would hug me and kiss me, then let me go, and I would get some food that would keep me satisfied, while my friends were jealous. And then I understood that my friends envied me, not because I had food to eat, but because my mother had taken me home, while they were left in the streets. My father had two sisters. His father and mother and three of the children were on the road of deportation. My father's father and mother and one of the sisters died. He and his younger sister survived. In their own words, a neighbor saw that they had been left on the road without parents and put them on a cart and took them to Alexandropol. As they reached the place, my father was taken to a children's home. They called it an orphanage then, not a children's home. He was taken to the Polygon Orphanage. My father escaped from the orphanage and went to work in stone quarries. He was eight or ten and had to work hard. And so he went on to work for the stone quarry department, as they called it, for 65 years, for his entire life. He didn't work anywhere else. As for my mother's family, there were five daughters and one son. Together with their father and mother, they came to Alexandropol, but they didn't stay there. They went farther to Karakilisa, today's Vanadzor. Her parents had a fever, and the night they reached Karakilisa, her father died. Her mother died the following morning. And the children, my mother and my aunts, remained without parents. My mother had an uncle, my father's brother. He took my mother and two little aunts to the American orphanage. Several groups of girls who were good-looking, more beautiful and skillful than others, and had learned a lot at the orphanage, were supposed to be taken to the United States. But Soviet Armenian leader Alexander Myasnikyan came to the train station and did not allow the children to be taken away. He prohibited it. My mother was part of one such group. Luckily, she wasn't taken to the United States. And then she finished school. Armenians from Kars preferred for their daughters and sons to marry other natives of Kars. In 1927, my uncle arranged the marriage of my father and my mother. 
When I look at it from the distance of many years, when we think that they grew up in an orphanage, perhaps they saw a lot of hardship. But they also received a good education and were brought up with a philanthropic approach. I remember the attitude of my mother towards all of her friends from the orphanage and their attitude towards her. In Tigran Metz Street, there are buildings constructed by the French. Three of those buildings had been allocated for housing for those leaving the orphanage, and they lived there. Now I remember the names of each of them, because when I was still a child, my mother would take me to see them. She would say, Chinar's child is sick, let's go and see what's happened to him. And so we were very close. That philanthropy and their orphanhood created a connection among them. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we work in this building, we take care of these children, we educate them. I wish all children could find their families. And frankly, I would love to become unemployed. That's my wish. No matter how well we take care of a child, how much we love him, a child must be raised in a family.